Thanks for tuning in. Today I'm going to show you some troubleshooting techniques when you have an issue with the photo section of your vintage stereo equipment as well as constructing a replacement transistor that is now obsolete out of two modern transistors. I hope you enjoy it. If you enjoy vintage audio equipment and you've come to the right spot, please subscribe and hit that notification bell as well as giving me a big thumbs up if you like this video and share it with others. There is a risk of serious injury or death from electrical shock working on this equipment. If you're not comfortable with working on the equipment, please do not take the cover off and consult a professional. Most pieces of vintage stereo equipment have a separate phono board. Uh, it's normally called an equalizer on most of the schematics and its job, uh, one of its jobs, is to take that very small uh, few millivolts from your turntable cartridge and convert it up into enough of a signal for the rest of the amplifier to use. So we've got a problem with the right channel uh, in this unit. Uh, the left channel seems to be working fine and the right channel isn't. So hopefully we can use that left channel as a, uh, as a helper for us. So let's get started. So I'm running a 1000 Hz test signal at only 10 millivolts into the phono input. That is the good channel. That's the left channel I'm looking at right now. I've just got my scope probe push down into the uh, connector pin for the left channel of this phono card. So that looks good. Now we'll go over to the right one. Um, not so good, right? That doesn't look so good there. So that, that kind of verifies why it's not uh, working properly. Something back here on this board is preventing that sine wave uh, from having the correct amplitude. So again, this is the, uh, the one that we think has a problem, or that we know has a problem. Uh, this is the right channel. And then let me try to keep it here on the scope and move the probe and show you the left channel. Get on there, there we go. But that gives us something to work with, don't it? This is what I'm talking about with vintage stereo equipment that has a problem with one channel. You've got the, the best expert in the world working with you, the other channel. <laughs> so, um, you know, hopefully we can trace that out and see what's going on. I've shown these test leads in my other videos. They're little grabber leads. I'm pushing down on it. You see those pins open up? Well, that is so much safer for getting down troubleshooting in these boards, right? I mean, this thing is plastic. It's all insulated. Can you still uh, short things out? Yes, you can, but um, this reduces your chances, even with a scope probe. You know, that tip comes off the probe and uh, you've got a lot of metal exposed. As I mentioned, using these test leads is uh, just so much safer than trying to stick a uh, scope probe down in here and uh, look at signals. Just like five years ago, when I had to change out one of the uh, 2SA 798s because uh, I had a problem with my left channel uh, phono not working. Uh, once again, I found a, uh, another 2SA uh, 798 uh, almost five years later in the right channel bad. As I replaced a bad 2SA798 transistor back about five years ago. I'm going to change out now the other three. And what I did five years ago is the same thing I'm going to do today. Um, I'm going to use two 2SA992 transistors to be a replacement for this uh, 2SA798 transistor. Um, you know, these transistors, 2SA798s, uh, as far as I'm concerned, now that I've had another issue with one, um, they're all going to be replaced on site. 
Uh, they have a little bit, you know, they have kind of a medium reputation, I guess, of failing. Um, but this for you guys is a good example of when you do have your equipment taken in for service, either have the technician do a little research or you do a little research on what particular issues can be found in that model of uh, vintage stereo equipment. They almost all have some things that um, should all be addressed. So this isn't a big deal for me, but for you folks who don't repair your own electronics, um, you know, it's a big deal because now your phono is not working and it's got to go back to the shop. And if you had to box it up and ship it, uh, it's a pretty big deal. This is the schematic of the F2570 um, equalizer assembly that we're going to be changing the, uh, the three remaining 2SA798 transistors out of. I've highlighted those. As you can see, these, I'm going to kind of get in here with my camera on one of them. They're really two transistors in one package. Um, you can see the emitters are tied together, and so what we're going to have to do is, is build the equivalent of this out of uh, two uh, 2SA992 transistors. And one thing in this phono board, these must be extremely closely gain matched. Um, you can't just take some you know, 992 transistors and put them together and say we're good. So what we're going to do is gain match them with my, uh, with my little portable device here. It's an Atlas DCA Pro. Um, it's very good at matching uh, gains. Uh, the HFE, what they call specification of transistors. So we'll do that. And then we're also going to, once we get them built, we're going to put a little shrink wrap around them. We're going to go ahead and keep these guys as thermally uh, the same as we can for drift. I've got my three pair of um, 2SA 992s that I'm going to be using. Um, as you recall uh, before, we were looking at that uh, HFE uh, parameter, which is the current gain or the amplification of, uh, of each of these transistors. Um, each of these pair are within an HFE of two of each other. Um, that is very close. We're ready to go and now we'll uh, build three transistors out of, this, out of these six. We'll use a pair for each of the uh, 2SA798 replacements. So what we've got to do is solder the emitters together and we'll use a little bit of shrink tubing over that um, to give it a little bit of insulation and then the, uh, the uh, other pins will line right up so we'll end up with five pins. So this one and this one, the two emitters will be tied together then we'll have that one pin that consists of the two emitters from the two transistors and then we still got the collector and base. So we're going to have five pins when we're done. I don't know if you can see that, but like this. Right, you put the two flat pieces together, is we're gonna put a piece of shrink tubing over these two. I've got a piece of um, shrink tubing here. So that's be a pretty good size piece to go over two transistors, doesn't it? So I'll use my little grabber here, keep my hands away from it, and we'll shrimp, shrink that uh, tubing down onto these transistors. All right, so, you know, as I said, this was a five pin uh, transistor that, um, the original, so, you know, just mount it down on the board just like this. And um, as I said, do you have to do this one here? No, but remember we had to bend this uh, emitter from this corner over to, into the center and from the other corner, because as you recall, we put the, um, 
the two replacement transistors face to face, so they're 180 degrees out, but no biggie. I'm Just like five years ago, I found a uh, 2SA798 transistor that's bad, causing the right channel problem. So uh, you know what I'm gonna do there. There's four of them. After replacing the 2SA-798s, the phono section uh, is working great. And I won't have to get back in there ever again, at least not to change the uh, 2SA-798s. I may be back in here again someday, but not for those. So again, I'd like to just um, bring up the point that when you service your own unit or have someone else service it, do a little bit of research and um, make sure you don't have some troublesome parts in there to where uh, it'd be a good idea for you to get in there just one time and get it all fixed up or you may have to revisit it again as I did. It was five years between them, between visits, um, as far as the 2SA-798 uh, transistor was concerned. But once I got that second one, I was going to make sure I had all four replaced so I wouldn't have to ever do this again. So I hope you enjoyed the video. And if you did, I'd appreciate a big thumbs up down below. And if you're not a subscriber and you like this video, I'd really appreciate if you uh, would consider subscribing. And to my present subscribers, uh, thank you very much for sticking with me. I hope y'all have a good day.